Chris Summers. I'm so excited to have you on Be The Solution podcast today. What's up? I'm, ex <clears throat> I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Maria. Good morning. It's a beautiful day here in Philly. And uh, kudos to you for keeping this podcast going. Thank you so much. Yes, it's a it's a a love and a passion. Although, <laughs> as you know, time consuming, right? We have to like schedule people and reschedule people, and then I'm moving around, and oh, it's crazy, but all good, all good stuff. I mean, it is all good. I, I'm really impressed, and you've had like some great speakers. You've had some fantastic content. You're really kind of giving back to a lot of people in the industry, in addition to doing some good work for yourself. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. So we're going to dive right in today. Chris has been in the real estate industry for well over two decades. He's a veteran, uh, agent, and broker. And Chris, the market, the market, the market. You hear people ask all the time. How's the market? How's the like, market? You like that question? That question gets on my nerves. I mean, it, it can, I'm, but like, <clears throat> it's a really important question to answer, right? Yeah, you know, whether it's clients, consumers, maybe people in your office, your team. I think exactly. the important thing, what I've learned over the years, no matter what's happening in the market, right? There's always something to be positive on, or there's something to be optimistic on in the future. And I think it's those things, Maria, that can really help get you going through the grind, through the tough quarters, the tough years and whatnot. But like, not for nothing, like our team's production is up 20% year over year. Um, so like we're outperforming the market, but like it's hard. It's really hard. Now, 2023 was like a really bad year too. So I don't think it's that difficult to be up that much, but I think a lot of other people might be like kind of flat, right? Year, year over year. Yeah, I think it definitely is a, a tougher market than what the marketplace has been used to. And I think that the requirements in order to be successful in this um, in this business now are just much higher. Um, and you know, as well as I do going through the times of 2007, eight, nine, 10, half of 11, that it, it requires more. And I don't see people willing to do what is required today from the most part. It's really, really, really hard. And even like back then, right? Like we did okay. Like, you know, like we like did a lot of short sales because like not too many other people were doing them. Like we found opportunities in that rough market. And in today's I, market, there's not as many opportunities. It's just really like a lot of hard work, you know, appointments, staying in contact with people, really knowing the market. I mean, it's really just a matter of like showing up each day and, and grinding it out. A hundred percent. I do remember back then. I mean, we actually did pretty well at that time. We were growing every year, even though, unfortunately, some of our colleagues were packing their bags and you know, boxing it up and leaving the industry. Um, it's a different environment today. And there's a lot of other factors that are coming into play. And, you know, we're talking here to, at the end of October. It's actually Halloween today. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. And, uh, you know, we have something next week coming up, which has led people like psychologically into a tailspin. And I think that takes a toll on you know, the purchase of buying and selling real estate as well. Yeah, like when I was a uh, president of, of GPAR, Maria, I would like be at the new member orientations, like, you know, to like welcome all the new people and whatnot. And I would always say like the over under, yeah, you know, for people to stay in the industry is two years, right? Because it's hard, you know, to get, like get things moving. Like maybe it's less than two years now. Maybe it's like a year and nine months. I don't know, but like, if someone comes in new and if they don't really have anything going on, they're not going to like make it past the two year mark. So let's, let's dive into like what people can do, do today. Like what, 
what would you suggest somebody joins your team and and they're they're I want to say new, but they're a couple of years in the industry, but really haven't seen that success that they want just yet. What are you telling them to do? What's the message? What's the schedule? Like if someone comes in new, like they almost like have to join the team, right? Yeah, because like they need lead opportunities. They need to like be there, show up. They need to like host open houses. They need to like be in contact with their sphere but you can only do so much, right? And if you're not kind of like getting some other opportunities over here, maybe like being on a team or a brokerage that has like a little bit more going on, it's going to be difficult. Now that means like success can't be there. It's just like a lot of, maybe it's, it's video, maybe it's social, maybe it's like, you know, really kind of like honing in on the first time home buyer market, which is a great market to be in now, right? Like with all the grant programs, the credits, a lot of agents don't really know about those things like inside and out. And if they don't, they should, because like, I like, like one of Gary Keller's lines, Maria, like in the past, we would always say lead gen, lead gen. Yeah. Now I think it's more like, instead of lead generation, it's like lead educating. Right. So like, you know, whether it's a buyer, seller, investor, developer to really provide more value than just like the basic service kind of thing. Does that make sense? Providing more value. So being in contribution, educating people before they're even ready to buy or sell or invest in real estate. Correct. Be the solution. Be the solution, right? Like That's you, that's me. But yeah, I mean, that's I right. think that's, that's really important because like you want to like, like the consumers and clients like really want to like, like trust someone and have that rapport. And unless you can kind of like show that value proposition, they might be like next, you know, or they just might like forget about that person where it's like really important. Like if you meet someone at an open house or if you get a prospect to like stay in contact with them, do some sort of system like with a database, maybe a new mortgage program comes out. Maybe it's like a cool new listing, like stay top of mind. So you've been doing this for 20 plus years and I remember Back in the day, you were doing videos and social before, I don't know, pretty much everybody. I remember, like, am I wrong or? No, you're right. Like, we really got known for that, like video marketing, social, like we were ahead of the curve and that helped like bring business in. So like, if you can find something, whatever it is to be ahead of the curve, or like just to be like the expert that's going to help now over time obviously everyone caught up you know like everyone's on facebook ig I mean, people still aren't doing as much video as they should in my opinion so i think that's still kind of like a market where people can do a few more like cool things you know, i mean there's a big opportunity there that i think that might be one area you know where people could do more but then some people are just like camera shy they just don't want to do it maybe they're lazy i think covid right i'm still a little bit lazy from covid so i think covid kind of like messed up a lot of people like with habits and whatnot but i mean this is the time now to like go into 2025 yeah you know, with a new mindset better habits and be the solution so we're sitting here at the end of october it's basically it's november we have um, as far as my calculation goes, I can tell you how many work days we have until December 20th. And we have uh, 37 days. Does that sound right? I took out Thanksgiving. Yeah. We have I mean, 37 work days. I mean, you know, you can work Saturday and Sunday. I don't count that. I count the days that I'm making prospecting calls, following up. You know, I, I look at it, it's like you have this much time left, 37 days. And what are you going to do? Because right now you're working for 2025. Correct. And in some cases, 2026, because Correct. it's just how it works. So this is the time, though. And you know this as well as I do, Chris, when. In real estate, people start by thanks by uh, Halloween. Agents start to 
do, 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 and then Thanksgiving, and then you see nobody. So let's turn this around this year for 2025. Let's get everybody ahead. Because don't you hear this? I'm going to start, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm going to get back into it after, after the holiday, after January 2nd. Yeah, like we're meeting like with people like on our team now, like we're talking about like goal setting now. And you're right, because like think about all the Christmas parties, like all maybe some sports stuff, right? You know, the holidays. And before you know it, like if people are thinking about, oh, I'm going to like set a goal or plans for 2025. And if you don't do that, you know, like if you do that in January, like you're you're that much more behind, right? So, I mean, this is January's the time. January's that... business is March. Correct. Right so, now, everything we bring in is for January. Correct. I mean, what's the likelihood of it closing by December 31st if it's not even on the market yet? Correct. I mean, yeah, I mean, our team will put some stuff under contract for December, but like as time oh, yeah, for yeah. Us, but, yeah, but I mean, things aren't selling. Most things are not selling in five seconds. Correct. Are yours? Yeah, like, but you're Taking like, a you're, long time. you're motivated people, yes, but like, yeah, I mean, Basically, people now are building, you're right, that pipeline you know, for the first quarter. Yeah, maybe you get lucky. Maybe a few things happen for this year. Great. Yeah, but like, and then there's that term luck, right? Like, well, where people don't really get lucky, Maria, like they create their own luck because like they've been working on things day in and day out, week in and week out, month in and month out for a long time. Something might fall into your lap, right? But that's not luck. Yeah, that's like the work from the past, too. So, um, something to keep in mind. A hundred percent. You know, we, that's preparation. We're prepared. We're prepared for that next opportunity because we've been doing the work. And I say work works. So doing the work, you know, Chris, I don't know if you know, but I did this hundred day challenge. I mean, hundred calls a day challenge for, for a week. <laughs> it was crazy. I, mean, I had to say, I had to stay at the office the one night till 8.23 because did, I didn't did hit you the 100. Huh? Did you get all the calls in? Uh, 523. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, it sounds easy, but it's not. I mean, that's really, really, really hard to get that many calls in. But, like, back in the day, that was normal, right? I remember making, like, those types of calls in yeah, 2004 I don't, and 2005. I, I don't really know, though, how many I was making because – it wasn't tracked in the CRM. Correct, correct. And now, you know, we use FUB, so everything's in there. Like, I could just screenshot it and show people, like, here it is. I talked for 15 hours and 45 minutes on the phone. I talked to 136 people, and uh, I had 523 dials. Like, I think, like, I mean, one thing I think about, too, because, like, some, I, I have, like, this analogy, like, where, like, some days... I think I'm on a Peloton, right? I'm spinning my wheels and going nowhere, right? And it's those phone calls or those top of mind things. I think it's really important you know, for people that are listening to this, including myself, you know, is make sure you're doing the revenue activities each day you know, for a certain amount of time each day. Because it's really easy to like, you know, just get bogged down in emails and texts and other things where like, before you know it, the day's over. Yeah, you got some stuff done, but you really didn't do like a lot of revenue generating type calls. You know, you know what I mean? It has to be time blocked in, in your schedule. Correct. Correct. And making a commitment. So that's the thing. I made a commitment to do it. And I, so, so here's like, here's the three things. I, it was specific 500 calls, five days. 100 calls a day. Yeah. Five days, that was the timeline, Monday to Friday. I publicly declared it. So I declared it to my organization. I declared it on Facebook, social media. I did a video about it. I did a post about it. And then I report it every day. And then I did a recap. So though that's a commitment. The thing is, we go and we want to make like goals. The problem with the goal is is that there's no commitment behind the goal. 
Correct. Like it's a, like, oh, this sounds good. Let's do 50 deals next year. Let's help 50 families. That sounds like a good number. One a week, two weeks off for vacation or whatever. But without like the action behind it and the thought of like, how is that going to happen? And what could possibly get in your way for that not happening? You know, and, and I want to share this, Chris, with the, about this whole 500 calls with you. I, first of all, I had an event to go to the night that I had to stay till 823. I could not go to the event. I had, I just didn't go. I, I signed up. I couldn't go because I wasn't done. So I missed that. I had a Remax thing the next day. And I looked at the days, three days before. It was a Thursday. And I had to be somewhere at, supposed to be somewhere at six o'clock that night. I said, there's no way I could be out of the office for two and a half hours. So I didn't go to that. I didn't go. I didn't show up. I w- went to that event. And I still wasn't done. So on the way to the event, it was in Cherry Hill. My husband drives and then I'm on the computer calling people still. And we sat in the parking lot of the event until we were an hour and 20 minutes late because of me. We sat in the parking lot so I could finish making the calls. We sat there for another 20 minutes after we got there. And I did it. I finished. I did it. I did the hundred. And, you know, it, it, it's not just like a hundred, it was a hundred calls. I also had listing appointments, some of them outside of the office where I went to people's houses, some on the phone, plus the marketing, plus the financials and all these other things that I, I was responsible for. So it really was anxiety. I mean, it reminds me of the book, Relentless. Where like it was written like by the trainer that trained like uh, Jordan, Kobe Bryant, like those guys like showed up every day, like did like do we like Wade did like serious like weight training and all sorts of stuff you know, before practice even started, right? And they're like on top of their game. And I know I think you're connected like with that guy, Chet Black, you know John yes. and Kobe, right? So like that guy's a beast. But I, I really like what you said because like. You can make a commitment to yourself, but more importantly, like when you start making commitments to other people, or maybe it's coaching, or maybe it's a friend or people in your office, or you, you like you make accountability online on social, but now like you're raising the bar. We're like, yeah, damn, I, I, I got to like, I got to meet this. I don't want to let other people down. And obviously when you do it, like you benefit yourself. So I, I really think that, you know, like whatever one could do, to enhance structure and accountability, you know, to like improve those habits. I think that's going to be a key, you know, for success for people in any year, right? Good. Yeah. You know, good. I mean, the real estate market, you know, could be fantastic, but like, if you're not doing your basic stuff, okay, great. You're not going to sell too many properties. Right. So yeah, you know, why not like do a lot and benefit, you know, when things do improve, which I do think they will improve. Maria. Yeah. So let's talk about the Philly market. So what's your take on it? What's your opinion? I mean, a lot of moving parts. Like sometimes I, you know, I wish we did more like of the burbs, but yeah, you know, maybe not so much. Cause like, yeah, you know, like if, if you, if you're a buyer in the burbs the last few years, I mean, that's tough, right? You know, loss, loss, right, loss. Man. But like in Philly, I mean, I think the combination of, I know we had a head fake, you know, with uh, mortgage rates. Yeah. But that trend will continue. Number one. I think Sherelle Parker, it was doing a pretty good job with public safety. And that was like a huge part, you know, in 2023 where like, there was a lot of shit going on. People are like, well, I'll just lease, you know, instead of buy. So like with that, I think the why own what you could lease mindset is going to start to turn into why lease, you know, when I can own, you know, with rates, public safety, jobs like doing well. I think there'll be maybe five to seven percent more transactions in Philly in 2025. I think rates will continue to be like a little stubborn, but I think 2026 will be the year like where things will really kind of like come into play. Maybe there's more development going on. So like you know, if you're you like like us, like right now, there's a lot of time to like really build the pipeline for the next two years. Yeah, you got to be able to uh, survive it. 
Yeah, survive hey, and, and, and if thrive. I'm wrong, you say survive it, thrive it. Yes, survive and thrive. That if I'm wrong with my prediction, well, hey, well, I, I worked hard along the way, but like I feel pretty good about that prediction, and like that kind of like keeps me motivated, like like just like keeps me going, kind of thing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I just look at it and say, look, you know, we got to do the work. Deals are difficult. Deal on top of like people not wanting to, you know, to buy at the level that we're used to. Correct. Deals are difficult. Yep. Financing is difficult. It, yeah. It's more difficult than it's been. I mean, it, the deals are tedious. I think like or maybe it's just us. I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, I think that like the termination percentage is like the highest it's been in a while. And it's like stayed that way. So like maybe, even if you get something under contract, yeah, maybe it blows up. Now the better agents will keep those deals together or like bulletproof the transaction. So yeah, but I mean, even if it doesn't like blow up, everything's harder. You know, inspections, this, that, or the other. A lot of emotions. You know, should I wait till after the election or whatever? You know, so it's it's a tough market. Yeah, but you know, the people that work hard in tough markets will come out that much more on top. And that's you because like you're the solution. I think, yes, we are the solution, Chris, and so are you. And that's why you're on the podcast. And I think that it's a, it's a tremendous opportunity right now. It's a tremendous opportunity to keep, to, to do the hard work, just to dig in and do it. And before you know it, you'll be out of this thing. Whatever this thing is, you know, you fight psychologically, people with this election, people are really messed up in the head about it. Like, and it's, yeah, man, it's, it's tough. You know, like, I wish people can like agree to disagree again, right? I agree. I won't say, I won't say who I'm like voting for, but like, I'm going to be with friends, yeah, you know, with anyone, no matter who they vote for, right? Me and, too. And I don't like, I wish there was more of that going on. And that could be like the case across the board, but. I mean, I think the good news, and I do think our market will pick up a little bit after the election. It doesn't matter who wins, right? There'll just mm -hmm. be like more velocity. I think rates will kind of trend down, you know, with, um, you know, like, you know, the future labor reports of inflation uh, data and whatnot. But yeah, I think just that being over, like I'm getting like a hundred text messages a day from spam. I'm like, oh my God. And oh it, yeah, me too. I get a lot. I see. I just write stop. Yeah, stop. stop. And then they keep coming. So, you know, I get, you probably hear this, you know, I yesterday somebody asked me, what's going to happen after the election? And I said, well, some people will decide to get off the fence. I said, you're going to have two groups of people, happy people and sad people or mad people. <laughs> Yeah. I said, so the ones that feel good will probably move forward with something. The ones that feel bad, I don't know. Maybe they'll sell and they want to get out of, out of Dodge. I don't I don't know. But I definitely think that we will have a pickup between after the election and up until Thanksgiving. And then maybe a little other jolt in December. And then, you know, I think uh, that's it for this year. But I do think that there's an opportunity to, still to move some product this year. Um, if it's priced, you know, aggressively and it's just taking, if it's not priced super aggressively, it's taking much, much longer to sell like a hundred days plus. Yeah. And like the paradox is, it's like some people like, you know, oh yeah, the market's doing great. Cause they see like a lot of development everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah, where I am right now, you know, most of, of the development and like Northern liberties and, and everywhere, it's like stuff being built for lease, right. Not for sale, you know, and like. I mean, the sale prices have gone up a little bit, yeah, but yeah, a lot of the sellers, a little bit of a disconnect. I think like the average listing might have three price reductions before it goes under contract. So you, know, you got to be like aggressive from day one. You got to be aggressive from day one. Also, you know, getting, making sure that the prices are getting adjustment. I mean, based on activity, first two weeks, see what it is. Activity Correct. good enough. You got to make the adjustment. Correct. And, and I think like some realtors are, are like scared, yeah, you know, to make that recommendation to the seller. Like, 
I'll recommend a price reduction. They don't have to do it. Yeah, but like I tell them if I if I don't do that, Maria, I'm not doing my job, right? And some people I think are just a little bit scared to make that recommendation. And then by doing it, you know, more often than not, you know, I'll get them under contract in, in the settlement too. Yeah, absolutely. And if they're scared, they probably shouldn't be listing property. Correct. They probably should be a buyer's agent. Correct. Um, you have a fiduciary responsibility to tell the seller the truth, to give them all the information to make the right financial decision. And in the case of a market where it may be going, um, prices may not be appreciating and maybe depreciating, you are doing a disservice to them uh, by not telling them the truth and by not doing your job. Correct. I mean, if they say no, okay, fine. Yeah, but at least you did your job, right? Yep. Yeah. And then, hey, you, yeah, you, let's, like, you put them on notice. Correct. Yeah, I would like to see the city. I, I know I'm kind of like jumping topics here, but I think this is important. And like the city needs to be more investor friendly. You know, like what does that mean? Like I think they forgot about property rights, leases you know, during COVID. The tax abatement should probably be reverted to how it used to be. Like they have the ability, I think, to do a number of things to kind of help, you know, like incentivize um, investing. But like a lot of the smaller investors have left the Philly market. And I think that's a problem. You know, like they got so beat up you know, during the COVID years, they might own a few houses, they, they sell them. Now an owner occupant goes in there. That's one less rental property. So in the meantime, the rent prices have gone up because inventory has gone down and the city just needs to be like a little bit more, hey, let's get some people investing in the city again and not just like the big guys. You know what I mean? A lot of the small and mid-sized investors are out. Correct. I talk to them. I call them. They're building in Margate, Longport, Ocean City, Stone Harbor, Reading, Allentown, Lehigh Valley, New, you know, Jersey, wherever. They're not here. Yeah, and the paradox is, and I tell people this, it's like people get so wrapped up over the federal election. Yeah, but like if you're focused on Philly, really what's more important is mayor and city council than president. You know what I mean? So like, you know, if people like kind of want to get involved more, I, I think we need more advo advocacy, you know, coming from various groups, you know, for, you know, real estate, property rights, you know, those types of things you know, in the next few years. Yeah, ab absolutely. I think that uh, we definitely need to be more investor friendly. We need to be able to get people out of our houses that are squatting there or not paying yeah. and not have to be nine months without income. Correct. Nine yeah, months to get somebody out. That's disgrace. Yeah. I mean, we need a squatters bill like two years ago, you know, and where is it? Like no one's proposing it. You know, so hopefully maybe something happens at some point, um, you know, but like unless there's a little bit more advocacy, that might never happen. So I'm really going to do what I can. Yeah, and lobby with GPAR. Hey, what's going on here? I mean, it's just not right for these investors you know, to deal with that. I had a I had a listing a month ago. The tenant moved out. They had a bad tenant. They like they got the property all ready to go, and like the photographer was going to go out, Maria, like the next day, and a squatter moved in that night with a truck, all types of furniture. They ended up like paying them like. 4,000 bucks, you know, just like cash for keys kind of thing. Like some of these people, like they have the system down and it's not right to the well, city. There must be some kind of like thing on social or TikTok or something that's telling people how to do this. Correct. Because we had the same thing. Client, they got out the tenant, they fixed up the place. We had it on the market. We went there, actually our team to show it. And somebody was in there smoking weed and we called the police and luckily, cause they were moving their stuff in. They said they had a lease. Luckily the police were like, okay, you have two choices. You can leave now or you can come with us. And we got them out. But I mean, that was, and this was at like nine 30, like, no, we went to show it earlier and then that happened. 
a couple hours later, they came back, and then that's when we called the police. And we got them out. But but there's so many that aren't getting out, and then yeah, that yeah. exact same thing that you just said happened. Correct. There's too many of those. Like Those aren't isolated stories, unfortunately. No, this was just like two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so. then they're stealing appliances. It's crazy. And they really need to crack down on it. I mean, the city has to be harder on crime. They have to stop. They have to go back to, you know, they should go back to before. There should be more pol more police on the street. Correct. Um, yeah. And there's I think, still a lot I mean, of work that needs to be done. Correct. And I, I think most people, you know, like are very happy with Parker. I'm, I mean, I don't know all, all the, the facts, but like I am happy with what I see with public safety, you know, like improving, like the police see more, like they could do their job and whatnot. I mean, that's a really important, you know, component of not just the real estate market, but just like, you know, quality of life you know, in a city. So I think there's like small improvements there. And I think that that's a big plus for us. Absolutely. Hopefully she continues to be uh moving everything in the right direction i'm hopeful yeah and i think some of these like yeah you know, like yeah you know, these outlier city council people that kind of got in there in the COVID years they'll probably get voted out in the next few years it will have like maybe a little bit more semblance of like a normal city council if that makes sense i'm not saying anything bad about the people it's just hard yeah you know, for like business to be conducted and yeah you know, people to like you know, live their life without worries of squatters and some of the things you know, we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, great. So, Chris, I have two questions for you. One, what's your guilty pleasure? I mean, it used to be, um, you know, vodka, but like I'm not drinking right now. I guess that wasn't like too guilty. Um, I had season tickets for the Phillies. I was so crushed. Yeah, you know, when they lost, I guess that's not really guilty either. Like, I'm kind of boring these days, so I don't really have, you know, too much guilty things going on there. What about you? Could I ask that same question back at you? Oh, mine's wine, but okay. I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking the wine right now. Yeah, I did a 95 days over the summer, actually, and then I went to Italy. Yeah, and I came back, and now I'm like on a break until my next vacation. Yeah, I got. Um, I try to get. Yeah, just taking breaks. Yeah, working out. What was it's, the uh, second? Yeah, boom. Let's go. Second what question: was, What are yeah. you most excited about personally for yourself and your future that you're working on? I mean, that's a really good question. Like, you know, I, I mentioned COVID earlier, and like, I think like, like some of the isolation and like just not like having like connections and just like weird stuff and you know like mask man like all, all that stuff like whether you you know, were pro or against like it was just a weird time and like my habits like i wasn't working out i wasn't like reading i wasn't doing like healthy things so like my big thing is this you know is like evolve growth opportunity like just be healthy you know, like have like more energy you know, get you know, plenty of sleep so that's like self-development, I guess. I don't know what the word is for that, but maybe yeah. you know, self, self personal development. development. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's awesome. I love it. I love I I like to read too, and I, I think it's great. You have great energy and you're looking good. So you too. thank you. you. Thank you for being on Be the Solution. Let's go. Let's wrap up 2024 and let's have a fantastic 2025. Yeah, I mean, I hope everyone that's watching this. You too, Maria. I, I love that, that let's go. Let's not just say it, but do it. So boom. Let's do it.